In this video, we look at normal distribution, which is part of the AI course under topic four, statistics and probability under the subtopic of distributions. Now in the AI SL course, we encounter three types of distributions. We have probability distribution, binomial distribution, and normal distribution. And then in the AI HL course, in addition to those three, we also encounter Poisson's distribution. But in this video, we are looking at normal distribution and we have three key concepts to cover here. The first is the shape and the characteristics of the normal distribution curve. And this is the curve here. It's otherwise known as a bell curve. It starts low left, it goes up to the top, and then it goes back down. Now, there are a couple of important um, points of the curve. The first, the center line is the mean and then we also have these points to the right and to the left, and these are the standard deviations. So for example, this point here is known as one standard deviation above the mean, so to the right, so one standard deviation above the mean. This next point here is two standard deviations above the mean, and you can probably get the point here for below the mean on the left-hand side as well. So this point way out here is three standard deviations below the mean. Now for a normal distribution set of data, we have, for example, between one standard deviation below and one standard deviation above, we expect that 68.3% of the data will lie between those two points with mean being the center uh, of, of, of those two points. And likewise, you can see the percentage of the data for two standard deviations and three standard deviations below and above the mean there. The other important concept to understand is that the total area under this curve here represents the probability, and we'll get to that as we go through an example, but that total area is equal to one. That's a very important concept to, uh, to remember and to understand, one as a number, or also 100% as a percentage. So 100%, so the total area underneath this curve is equal to one, or as a percentage, 100%. Okay, let's go across to this example here on the right hand side. And as we work through this example, we'll cover key concepts two and three. Okay, this example reads, the scores in a test out of 60, so we have some sort of test, uh, not sure what the topic is, could be, could be mathematics, could be science, could be, could be business, not sure, but it's a test out of 60, but the scores are normally distributed with a mean, or in, or in other words, an average score of 51, and a standard deviation of two. Now, if you're not sure what standard deviation kind of means, that's understandable. It's a bit of a hard concept to wrap your head around. But the way that I like to think about it in simple terms is, if we have a small standard deviation, it means that the data is clustered close to the mean. So a lot of student scores are close to 51, and our curve might look something like this. But if we have a large standard deviation, that means that the scores are spread out. So that means that some scores might be really low and some scores might be really high. It might look something like this. Could be really spread out data. So that's the way that I like to think about standard deviation. It's a measure of the spread of data. And in this case here, we have a standard deviation of two, which means that one standard deviation above the mean, above the average score of 51, is a score of 53. One standard deviation below the mean would be 49, which if we go back to our diagram, it means that 68.3% of students, their scores are between 49 and 53. So that's the way to think about a normal distribution curve. Okay, let's now work through the two types of questions that you'll, that you'll encounter here. There's, there's two main types, and, and the, we have these in parts A and B. The first part reads, uh, I have it in short form here, but basically what, what this question would say is a, a, a random student is chosen who sat this test. What is the probability that this random student score is higher than 54? So higher than 54, if I was to go to my normal distribution curve here, 54 is about here. So if I trace this up, and I like to shade the region on the normal distribution curve, so I'm looking at this region here. What is the probability that a randomly chosen student scored greater than 54? Now that's a pretty good score because we have an average score of 51. So 54 and higher, again, go back to this point here, the total area under the curve is equal to one or 100%. So what is this shaded region as a proportion 
of one. Well, it looks pretty small. It could be say uh, 0.1 or, or 10%, could be 0.15 or 15%, not too sure. Well, we need to find out what this area is because the area represents the probability. And if we go back to the question, we're looking for the probability of a randomly chosen score being higher than 54. Now to find the area of a shaded region, because that gives us our probability, we use the normal CDF command on our calculator. Let's go ahead and do that. So we bring the calculator up, we go menu, number five, probability, number five, distributions. Now for normal distribution questions, we'll either use the normal CDF command or the inverse normal command. Either, just one of those two, no other ones. For this question here, we are going to use the normal CDF command because we are trying to find the area under the curve. And in part B, we'll, we'll, we'll look at the inverse normal. So normal CDF, let's choose that. Now the lower bound, in this case here, in our shaded region, the lower bound is 54. The upper bound is the highest possible value. Now, sometimes you don't know that and you'll need to just enter very a very high value. However, I do know here that the maximum score is 60. A student get can't get higher than 60. So I know that my upper bound is 60. Now my next, uh, th this here is the mean, this mu here. So we're now telling the calculator that my normal distribution curve has a mean of 50 and a standard deviation of two. I hit OK, and that is my answer there. So 0 0.0668. So writing this, this would be the probability of a score being greater than 54 is equal to 0 0.0668. So that is the area of the shaded region, which also represents the probability of this occurring. Okay, let's now look at the second type of question that we'll encounter, part B. 20% of students scored less than some number. We need to find this number. So this is like the opposite of part A. 20% of scores shared less than X. So if I was to shade a area of 20% or 0.2 as a decimal, it might look something like say this. I'm not exactly sure, but I'm just gonna guess. I'm just gonna draw 20% of the total area. So I'm looking to find this value here. What is the score that represents a point on the horizontal axis such that the area to the left of it is 0.2 as a decimal? And we're going to use the inverse normal command to find this. Let's go ahead and use that. We go menu, probability, distributions, this time we're going to select inverse normal. So we choose this one when we have the area underneath the curve and we want to find the value on the horizontal axis. In this case here, the test score. Okay, the area is going to be 0.2. Now just be careful with this area here and as you go and practice questions, you'll realize the calculator only reads the area from left to right. In, this, in our example here, that's okay because our area is to the left of this value. But if your area is to the right, then you'll need to do one subtract that area. But try a few questions and you, you'll understand. But for our case here, we can just enter our area as 0.2. Our mean is 51. Our standard deviation is two. We hit okay and we get a score of 49.3. So the way that we would write this is the probability of a score being less than X is equal to 0.2. Using our calculator, we can find that X is equal to 49.3. So they're the two different types of questions you'll encounter for a normal distribution question. I recommend now going across to the question bank section and trying some of these questions.